What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of the Five Takeaways, where we're going to look at the weekend's game against Everton in Conte's first game in the Premier League for Tottenham Hotspur and see what we can take away from it. And there were a lot of positives, albeit it was a nil-nil draw and no shots on target, but there definitely are positives to take from it. Mm -hmm. And let's get into the first takeaway, and that is Vital Skip. Yeah, so Oli Skip was um, quite uh, vital in and out of possession yesterday. He was the one uh, who had a lot of composure in the centre of the park and he was actually, obviously defensively we all know how good he is, but um, looking forward as well, his passing was generally quite good. Um, he had the most key passes on the team out of any, anyone on the pitch, um, second most tackles, he had the most interceptions and he also had the highest passing accuracy on the pitch as well. So it was a very composed, very calm, but also very effective performance from Oli Skip. And that's what we know uh, from Oli Skip since he's been back into the team. You know, every time he's on the ball, cool, calm, composed. He's hard in the tackle. He's aggressive in the tackle. And what we're seeing from him recently as well, he can drive the ball forward and make stuff happen uh, further up the pitch. So I'm so happy uh, with the way Skip is developing. And when you're looking at the team and how we're going to set up in the future in terms of the midfield, because we're not really creating too much from the mid midfield because of him and Hoybier, just not that those kind of players. So when we're looking at that, and trying to put in creative players alongside a more defensive player. In my opinion, I think Skip might be getting the nod ahead of Hoybier at the moment. Yeah, I think he's just a bit more, bit more disciplined, isn't he, than Hoybier? Mm. That's what I feel. And I think in possession as well, he's more likely to be the one dictating play than someone like Hoybier. And I think his passing range might be a bit better. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out in the future. Definitely. Uh, but that is the first takeaway. Vital Oliver Skip. Let's move on to the second takeaway. And that is Ben Davis, come back. Yeah, he's made a good start to life under Conte, hasn't he, Ben Davis? Slotted right in that left centre-back role, um, which I think is probably his best um, position at this kind of age, in this stage of his career. He made the most passes out of anyone in the team, second most tackles, second most clearances as well, and he also had um, the second most uh, accurate long passes in the team. So yeah, this could be a, a second chance kind of autonomy. I did feel like he was falling by the wayside once Reglon came in. He was never really getting a look in. Obviously, he had an opportunity to establish himself once Rose got injured and was out the side, but I never really took it. And um, now when Reglon came in, um, everyone thought that's the end of Davis. But in the left centre-back role... It, I do think that's his best position and um, I think Conte might like him there for the time being and if he can establish himself, maybe he could get a second chance. Yeah, I mean, the only way for me he works at left back now is if he's like, you know, in that lopsided system where we used to play where one is defensive, one is attacking, uh, making up that back three. I think he can he can find a role there, but Conte doesn't like to play like that. He likes to play with flying wing backs and he just can't do that role. He just can't. And and yeah, I think you're 100% right in what you're saying. He's slotted straight into that left centre back role Role. He does it for Wells really well and he started life under Conte really well as well. So long may it continue. And um, yeah, I think he's actually found a home there. Let's see how it plays out. I do think when you're looking at the back three, he's probably, he might be the first one to be replaced. I do feel that, but I think he's definitely started um, life well under Conte, that's for sure. He's the one as well with the most passes in the team. So he was the one most willing to receive the ball, most looking to um, make makes lots of passes. And um, and um, that, it's interesting that he was a the player they mo that the, most of the players looked for to like make most of the passes out of the back. What's also interesting to me is uh, out of the back three, he's the one uh, foraging into the, the opposition half more. I mean, you would have thought it was maybe Romero uh, would be doing that, but it was him. Uh, he found himself in good spaces at Vitesse and he found himself in good spaces uh, yesterday at Everton as well. And he's probably the most, out of all the centre-backs, probably the one most comfortable in the one going out wide, mm. wide areas as well. So it could really work out, but we'll have to wait and see. It's early yeah, days. early days, exactly. Let's move on to the third takeaway, and that is forward thinking. So despite Spurs yesterday having a bit of trouble in their attacking play and their, um, didn't have another, another game, they didn't have a shot on target, they did look to get the ball forward more often um, when they tried to, when they, when they were able to. And this is proved by um, the stat that for um, progressive distances, which is distance in yards, um, uh, from from passes at least 10 yards going towards the opposition goal. It was our second highest, actually, of the season, second just behind the Newcastle um, um, performance. So it did show that despite us um, struggling when we did get in forward, get the ball forward to get kind of muster opportunities, we were trying to get forward more, much more than we were previously. Yeah, and I don't... I think... So 
before our problems was to like progress the ball from defence all the way um, into the final third. I don't think that was our issue yesterday. Our issue yesterday was our quality in the final third. I did think we we got into like good positions where we should have done a lot better. You know that Regulon chance, that Emerson chance, a few other chances where uh, we definitely could have done better with um, our end product. I think that was our issue yesterday. Not not the way we were kind of progressing the ball into that position. Yeah, and I think in possession, we looked fairly decent, actually, mm. with some of the football we played. Obviously, there were times where we were giving the ball away a bit cheaply, but in general, um, there were some positive signs, and I think with more time, um, it will get better. Definitely. Uh, let's move on to the fourth takeaway, and that is keeping Everton at bay. So Everton actually did put us under quite a decent bit of pressure yesterday, especially in our attacking third. Everton, it was the most pressures they've put on any team last um, the, during the season in, the, in that game. No team and no team has pressed Tottenham in their defensive third more than Everton did yesterday. But uh, despite this, we were able to actually play out the back quite mm. decently, and this is shown by we had more. Um, passes in our defensive third than any other game we've had this season even though Everton pressed us more than any other team have pressed us and that showed that we were able to quite confidently confidently play out the back and play away our trouble when we needed to and they weren't able to catch us too many times in our defensive third and we also uh, we only allowed Everton one carry into our own penalty area which is the lowest um, of uh, our, which is our lowest total of the season which is pretty good defensive work uh, from Conte they didn't, Everton and weren't able to get into our penalty area too many times. That's interesting. And I kept mentioning this during uh, the watch along saying how we're playing out from the back, you know, because like you said, Everton were pressuring us and pressing us uh, in the defence. But the way we were so calm and cool and just passing it around them uh, at the back was just really good to see. It really was good yeah. to see. And we haven't seen that since Pochettino. Yeah. And, it, look, and it, even even so, even though it was pretty good, it wasn't perfect. But just, you know, if we're this good after two training sessions, imagine, you know, weeks and weeks in the, uh, in the future, how good we're, how confident we're going to be playing out in the back and, and, and lulling teams in and exploiting that space. But I'm, I think Conte's onto something. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and like you said, after only two games and probably two training sessions, to be, you know, if, we've si if we're seeing this already, what are we going to see in a few months' time? Exactly. What are we going to see in a few months' time? So I am very excited. Conte ball is on its way. I was about to say Nuno ball there. Yeah, but, <laughs> but let's move on to the last takeaway, and that is... Top four, tall order. Yeah, with West Ham's win yesterday uh, against Liverpool, it means um, we are 11 points. 11, so after 11 games gone, we are seven points off um, West Ham, who are sitting in top three. Six points off um, Liverpool in top four, but are we really going to finish above Liverpool this season? Probably not. West Ham, if we're going to, if we look... Now we've got Conte through the door. You got to look at pro look at top four and think: Can we can we get there? That's probably got to be our, our ambition now. Uh, under Nuno, I was happy with top six, but under Conte, it's like top four has got to be the aim. Uh, that's he's not he's not here for you know a sixth place finish. But out of the top four at the moment, West Ham have got to be the team we're aiming for, and they're seven points clear now. So it's going to you know a lot of games still to play, but we don't want that gap to get any bigger in the near mm. future because we need to start um, closing that gap. Seven yeah. points is. A decent amount. But what I would say to that is that, um, you know, our favorable, we've got favorable fixtures now for our next five or six games. We've got very winnable games in all of them. Uh, I'm not sure who West Ham have. I'm going to bring it up now to see who they have. But their next game, uh, Wolves away. After that, they got Man City. After that, they got Brighton. And after that, they got Chelsea. So That's they've right. got tough run of fixtures coming now. And I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from West Ham because they've been brilliant this season. A very structured team. Played very well yesterday. Uh, well. Played very well yesterday. Um, but what I would say is that it's a long, long season ahead, a long slog ahead. And I think it's going to be a big, big battle for this fourth spot. And um, just because West Ham are that many places ahead of us, it's still early days. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't write us off for sure. Yeah, and I do get the feeling that... I'm not sure West Ham will drop off a cliff, but I reckon that are very high at the moment. Will they? Will can it go? Can it exactly. still go that way for exactly. West Ham? But for Spurs, the only way is up. I think at this. I point. think the way I look at West Ham is right. Is like um like a Spurs team when we kept trying to get that top four and we kept missing out. We were like good all season and just missing out on the last final hurdle. I got a feeling this could be the same case for West Ham, especially if their European exploits they carry on and exactly. how it will affect them in the second half of the season. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, uh, but again, you know there are other teams in. I know Leicester uh, have been shocking this season, 14th or 13th in the league. At 
at the moment, but they're going to come good at some stage, I reckon. Arsenal not lo- looking too bad as well. Man United, I'm expecting them to turn it around at some point. Especially so, Sakoli. Yeah, so I think that this this top four race is going to be a long, hard slog until the end of the season. It's going to be wide open, though. We've yeah. just got to keep ourselves in there. Yeah, definitely. But that is our five takeaways. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of our takeaways and what your takeaways are in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.